the big question would be, you talked earlier about how you're hesitant to watch your own work. This, sitting and watching this movie for you is watching you yeah. at 17, 67, and everything in between. Mm -hmm. How's th have you had that experience yet? Uh, Are you prepared for that experience? I've seen just enough of it, and seeing me at that age, it has finally answered the question for me, is, uh, which is no wonder I never got laid. <laughs> <laughs> the original title of the film. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I had a lot of energy, and I was, and I was loud, and uh, you know, uh, I could, uh, I could, I could make it laugh. Well, uh, you just describe anything. <laughs> I've occasionally been forced to look at myself in 19, from 1990, every day of my life it was televised from 1993 oh, up yeah. until about, and yeah. um, I'm not happy with any of it. <laughs> and I always watch it and I look at my wife and I go, why? <laughs> well, so what, what, we did actually have to examine this probably more than you ever do on yeah. a movie because we had to literally go right. And we had technicians that were looking at our skin and stuff like that. But we also had to look at the timing and the cadence of what it is. Cause there is, I don't know what the actual name of it, but there is, there is a, um, there is a factor. I can't remember what it's called. Um, we thought that we were speaking at a very realistic cadence. And then we would go watch a playback and it was as slow as molasses being poured. It just took forever. But I would say, it's like the cinematic time slip. <clears throat> it seems like it's fast, but it plays in real time. So that's one of the things we discovered about it that didn't make it any more fun to sit there and look at ourselves uh, in, you know, dressed up as, as, as we were. It just occurred to me, I know that I've talked to you and you've several times where you've slipped into a, a Ron Howard impression. You've, you've just, uh, you've, you've destroyed Robert Zemeckis' career. Uh, uh, and yet he comes back for more. <laughs> do you, uh, do, uh, is this happened as, is anyone who directs you, uh, you know, is liable to be uh, impersonated by uh, you? Some, some are a little, you know, some, I guess, are. I don't even know a what, a, what a Spielberg impression would be. I don't even, I don't get a sense this of would, This would be, oh, I don't care what you say. <laughs> <laughs> We, on every on every movie I've done, I've, I think I've worked with Stephen five times. Uh, let's see, Ryan and the Terminal and uh, Catch Me If You Can, mm -hmm. um, Bridge of Spies. Bridge of Spies. Spies. Yep. Is there another one in there? I don't. I can't recall. <laughs> Is there another one in there? I'm check my <laughs> IMDb. Um, and he always does this thing. I I wake up and I see you know uh, Stephen uses the screenplays of Stephen's movies are the most basic blueprints. They are not, uh, they are not the Rosetta stones. They are not like set down. So it'll come and there'll be a lot of dialogue and, you know, you do this and explain this and you get there and, uh, um, I'll go, they say, oh man, there's an awful lot of stuff in there. I think I'd like to cut that. And I'd like to cut that. And I'd like to cut that. And then I get to work and, and Steve will say, okay, here's the shot. We're going to start here and the camera's going to be right here. We're going to be following you and you guys will be saying all your stuff right there. I said, well, I was thinking that uh, maybe we don't need all this. Oh, I don't care what you say. <laughs> I know. The, la the last couple of gigs... The, the, la the last couple of gigs that I've had, I said, I said, when everybody is in town, I, we did this on Bridge of Spies and also, uh, but mostly just on Bridge of Spies. I said, look, I, I'll get, we'll get together with all the guys. Oh, we did on the post. We did the post together. Did the same thing with the post. Get everybody together and we'll read through some of the scenes. And I'll just explain. I said, listen, everybody, there are some days that we will come to work and we will have all of this stuff memorized and we'll be hot. We will have read through it. We'll be prepared and we will get to this, uh, to the stage and Stephen will have done all that work for us. 
We don't have to do anything except inhabit the space mm -hmm. because Stephen is telling the story from the cinematic perspective where the camera is and what he's doing. It's not going to not even going to matter. Yet. But then there'll be other times, my friends, <laughs> when we will show up and we'll know it all and we need to know it because we have to get there. When we, uh, when we shot the stuff on the Gleinica Bridge, on Bridge of Spies, which was the real place where mm -hmm. the spies were exchanged. Crazy. Uh, we, we, were, we were freezing to death. It was very, very cold. And Stephen came up to us and said, hey, I hope you guys know all your lines because I haven't the slightest idea how we're going to shoot this. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I just turned to all the guys and said, what did I tell you? <laughs> <laughs> and then then he's the most malleable guy. Well, what if we stand here, Stephen? What if we come out here? What if he comes out? Great, 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 great. Oh, that's a great idea because they're not going to come. And then he's very excited about all that kind of stuff. <laughs>